Hi, this is Michael Josephson for the Josephson Institute of Ethics. You know, ethics is often easier said than done, and, and, it's, and it's hard not only because sometimes doing the right thing will actually deprive of us of everything we want. I've used the example of when I want a donut, you know, I, I might rationalize and get a Diet Coke. But also because of the fact that sometimes the organizational culture doesn't really support doing the right thing. In fact, it might be encouraging you to, to do, do the wrong thing. And so what I want to talk about is some of the critical obstacles that do sometimes prevent a fundamentally good person, a person who really wants to do the right thing and in other settings really does try to live a good life, but finds him or herself in a, in a business setting or an organizational setting, because this can happen in government as well, ending up making a compromise and deciding that it's really okay. And so the, 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 the excuse or the, 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 the obstacle I want to talk about today is rationalizations because I think it's really one of the most powerful. I've used the example of how I will rationalize having something I shouldn't eat by trying to tell myself that as long as I do something else, you know, it's good enough. You know, there's a story about there's, there's three birds on a wire and two of them decide to fly south and the question is how many are left? And an awful lot of people think that, that, that there are only one left, but in fact there are three left. Because deciding to fly south and flying south are two entirely different things. And the fact of the matter is, is that doing the right thing isn't just a matter of thinking about it. It's not a matter that we got it on the board or on the wall or that I mostly do this or I'm basically honest. It's about the fact of how we behave, whether we do the right thing, whether we get off the wire and flap our wings and go where we ought to go, even when it may not take us just where we want to go. And so the first thing to understand is, is that the reason rationalizations work so well is because we want to convince ourselves that we're okay. I mean, if you had no conscience at all, if you were really a sociopath, or if you have sociopaths working for you, they don't need to rationalize. They can say, I'm scum and I'm proud. You know, it works. I'm not limited by these rules. But that's really a rarity. The overwhelming number of people, including some of the most evil people you've ever heard about, think they're okay because they've made a rationalization. So the first thing that's important to do is to understand the difference between a rational decision and a rationalization. Because we want rational decisions. A rational decision is, and by the way, the difference is when does the reasoning process take place. In a rational decision, you reason first and you come to a conclusion. In a rationalization, you start with the conclusion and you simply justify it. Everything's there to say that it was really okay. In many cases, one of the reasons why lawyers, and some of you may know that my background is as a lawyer, often get a, a bad reputation is our job is often to rationalize behavior that's already occurred. People have already done something and we've got to defend it and justify it and somehow make it seem okay. And, and the problem is that isn't an honest process. A rational process comes to whatever conclusion is dictated by the facts and the principles and the values. Who should we really hire here? Who should we fire? Should we really tell our customers about this problem? Should we give them a refund? When should we give them a refund? All of these very practical questions that really lead to behaviors that will later be perceived as either being highly ethical or less than that. The rationalization is the excuse we tell ourselves to allow us to do something that we no, we shouldn't do, or we certainly know we shouldn't do, but we convince ourselves it's okay. It's, the, it's like an anesthetic to the conscience. Think of this story. This man calls together his three closest friends. He says, look, I've got an odd request, but I want you to promise. I'm going to give you each $20,000, but I want you to put it in my coffin after I die. They try to talk him out of it. They say, what, what are you going to need with money? He says, look, I want spending money for the afterlife. They try to say, come on, you won't need money. He says, you may be right, but from my point of view, there's no downside. You're my friends. Promise me you're not. So they agree, and he gives them the $20,000. Sure enough, he dies. Three days later, they go in the past the funeral, and each puts in an envelope in the coffin. The way out, the first person says, I got a confession to make. I didn't put in all the money. I took out $20,000 to give to the victims of Katrina. I couldn't see burying all this money when the needs are so great. Second person says, I'm relieved to hear you say that. To tell you the truth, I didn't put in all the money either. You know, I was his accountant, and before he died, I put his entire estate in order, and I never had a chance to bill him. I figured he owed me a minimum of $10,000, so I just took the $10,000 he owed me, and I put the rest in. And the third person looked at the other two and said, I can't believe you two. We promised him. He was our friend. I want you to know my word's my bond. That's why I gave him a check for the full amount. 
Now the reality is, is all three of these people broke their promise, but they had an excuse. The first person said, I'm doing it for the greater good. The second person says, you know, I'm just taking what's coming to me. And the third person says, it's not my problem if he can't cash the check. But in reality, none of them kept their promise. And the fact that they may have forgiven themselves or let themselves off the hook doesn't mean it's either ethical in reality or certainly in the eyes of people who perceive it. Because that's a rationalization. So what I want you to be sensitive to is to think about where might you be tempted to rationalize? Where does your company tend to rationalize? What, what kinds of excuses might be used just to justify decisions that might feel like they're good business or they're more efficient or they save money, but they just simply don't square with your notion of what it is, to be honest, what it is to be fair, what it is to be caring, etc. So what I want you to be sensitive to is don't beat yourself up because you rationalize, because everybody does. Just be more sensitive. Work on it. It's like a diet. Think about it every day. When are you making excuses? By, by the way, you want to get better at this? Just listen to your kids for a while, and you'll see. Because they're not as skilled as you are at rationalizing, and their rationalizations become more evident. But the fact is, you know it when you see it. But so does everybody else. Ultimately, what matters is integrity. And integrity is the consistency between words acts and beliefs. Integrity comes from the basic same root as the word integer, which means wholeness, consistency, unbroken wholeness. And so what you want to have is integrity. If you say you believe it, act that way. If you really don't believe it, then change your statement of beliefs. But do, do what you say, say what you do, and live a life of integrity and be aware of the tendency of you or others to find excuses. Guess, you know, in the end, Character really does count. 